Okay. Um, no, he's he's logging in shortly, Misty. Just so you know, I don't know what that was all about. Um, but we can find out later together. Okay. Sure. Thank you. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Hold on a second. Welcome, welcome, everyone. We're going to get started um, just shortly. It's about three, five minutes. So you can get comfortable wherever you are. Grab your favorite beverage. Um, mine is coffee. And uh, we'll get started. I have the agenda on the screen. If you don't have time to pull your documents, um, I'm making that convenient. And uh, I'll have it up. And then you can read it later when you actually have more time, um, sent quite a few things. So we'll start shortly. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, I'm Paul. Hi, Paul. So good to hear your voice. We Hi, finally Carol. Thank Hi. you for the invite. <laughs> oh, we're happy to have you here. I, I was really looking for you. <laughs> I found my way to you. It's been months, but it was a pandemic, so I got hired during the pandemic, so I'm just glad I've, I, I made my way. <laughs> you, did, you did a good job, and you followed up, too. <laughs> Man, I, was, I, I so I'm writing a book when you get a job in the pandemic. <laughs> good job, Cheryl. <laughs> I, I'm going to go grab some notes out of my car. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay, we have time. We have All a few right. minutes. Zero. Mr. Sacedo, is that you? I can't see you. I have my screen share. Hold on. Let me uh get back to the camera. Oh, look at you, Deck Bow, sir. You look handsome. Oh, thank you. All week. It's been a, a press week all week. Um so your book, is it getting a job in a pandemic or getting a job in a pandemic working for that man, Robert Sacedo? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the second, the second, yeah, I don't know how I survived my onboarding, I'm, it's really special, <laughs> okay, so, you yeah, know, one day, I'm gonna write a book about it, <laughs> but at least we got it done, you have all your reports, the board, they can take you to task, we know where all the money is, you got it. it's all good, and you guys were doing really well for the first year in a pandemic, I, it shocked me. Um, so I'm excited to share that with the board. And underfunded. Well, yeah, not really underfunded, but it's it's how you earn. It's the fees that were earned. You, you put them to use for the amount you earned. You didn't get to earn everything. That's not your fault. Yeah, that's so, my point. yeah, I mean, what can you do about that? Yeah. So congratulations, not bad. Compared to the to the rest of the city, you're still in good company. You know, I'm trying to, but before we get started, I'm trying to figure out who the companies are that provide the implements for the vaccines. 
like the, the containers, the on the public health side. Yeah, we can yeah. look that those, up. Those are the companies I want to invest in. Oh, okay, 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 okay. That's a separate conversation, sir. Right. <laughs> well, we haven't started yet officially yet, so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I do know some good folks in that that area. Yeah. Yeah. But you also could make a cause out of it, like an economic development. It still could be. It fits. You know, it does. Yeah. yeah. Access to capital for. There, you know, everyone runs to, hey, go buy Pfizer stock. I'm like, ah. I want to know who they're getting their supplies from. Hi. That's what I want to buy. Good it's cheaper. Good morning. Hi, Yvonne. Welcome. Welcome. Good. Okay. We've got people coming in. Miss Pat. We've got Giannis. Hey, Robert. Hi, Robert. Good morning. Hey, Paul. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing outstanding. That's good. What I'm going to do at this point is so 201. I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order, and then we're going to recess for five minutes just to give folks a chance to come in. That way, we start on time. So at this point, I'll, I'll call the meeting to order, and uh, we will do roll call in just a moment. And then we're going to just go recess for five minutes. Oh, Yvonne, we can hear you. Who's that? Oh, that's, no, I'm sorry. That's Pat Guillory. We can hear her background. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, it wasn't me. <laughs> I'm sorry. You. That's no problem. I'll take care of that right now. There you go. So we will uh, we're recessing for five minutes and then we'll get started. Either guy sure or Giannis with background noise. For those of you joining, we are taking a five minute recess until to allow others to join the call. We've already called the meeting to order, but we're just going to recess for the first five minutes. Once again, for those of you just joining us, we have called the meeting to order, but we are recessing for the first five minutes to allow more people to join and do an open roll call. So we'll be starting in about uh, three minutes.
Once again, for those of you just joining us, we have uh, um, called the meeting to order, but we are recessing the first few minutes of the meeting to give others a chance to join us. We will start in two minutes. Uh, Robert, question, is my video working? Mm, no. Uh-oh, okay. It says, that's weird, okay. I think I'm gonna log off and come back on. Okay. So, thanks. <clears throat> Okay, we've uh, called the meeting to order. We have recessed for the first few minutes. I'm going to give it uh, one more minute and then we'll get started. Okay, we're gonna uh, adjourn the recess and go back into the meeting. Um, first order of business is roll call. I'm gonna go through our roll call list to see who's present uh, or if you're representing someone who should be present. Uh, first on the list is Iris representing Botosh. Are you here? Uh, Keith, Keith um, Davis, Keith Davis. Pam Bakewell. Stephen Bland, Yoav Botash, anyone representing Fred Calloway? Uh, so, Ashley Calloway. Ashley Calloway is present. Uh, Jason Lombard, uh, Linda Chen, Selena McHugh, of course I'm here. Dan Kahn, Rosemary Dannon, Alan DeCastro, Paul Goodry, Susan Espinoza, Victoria Fortson, Nathalie Gav, Lydia Hart, Salvador Hurtado, Jamila Beasley, Adam Fleiner, Adam usually here. John Beck, Lisa Meggs, Simone Santillo, Representative for Lafred Leeds. Vita Nicol, Mana Abelota, 
Representative for Tavis Smiley. Neeson Tepper. Paul Becker. Charles Wilson. And Yoav Botash. Other people present. Um, sure, if we can make sure that we uh, keep track of um, people as they come in uh, for the roll call purposes. And I'll do the roll call again at the end, just, just to be sure. Um, yes, we'll do. Got it. Got it. Let me just, let me just go through uh, bid staff and partner roll call. I'm here. Uh, just correction on my name is spelled S A U S. There is no C in my name. We are the original Salcedos. There's no C in my name. We're the, the real ones. Cheryl Branch. Here. Cherie Franklin. Giannis Oliver. Paul Derrick is out on the street. Anyone representing Giant Steps? Uh, Breast Power Washers. I see, I know Pat Guillory is here. Representative from CD8. Representative from CD10. Correction on the uh, person responding for CD10. Uh, Sylvia Lacey was with the old administration. So we'll have to tap back in with uh, Ridley Thomas's office to get the new person. Uh, hey. LAPD, uh, Paul. Is Paul, is, did you let Paul back in? Yes, Paul is here. I think so. Paul, he may he, have he dropped, dropped off. Oh, he dropped off. So he logged out. And he was supposed to come back in. Check, check to see if he, he needs to be admitted. Uh, no, but here comes Jason. Just uh, joined the waiting room. Jason Lombard is joining. Okay. No, um, he, he will. He will. Paul will try again. Okay. Um, uh, Queen Amina. And uh, here's Jordana. She usually represents Mr. Leeds. So Let's clarify. Jordana, oh, wait, she comes in. We'll clarify. Mm -hmm. Let me finish this list and we'll go back to that. James Burke. Chaos Network. Ben's here. Ben's here. The city Clerk's office. Eugene Van Cies. Are you here, Eugene? Ashley Calloway has already spoken, so we know she's here. And Ben is here, Ben Caldwell. Right, he just responded. And let the record reflect that uh, Jason Lombard has entered the meeting. Also oh. reflecting, uh, who else? Yvonne Jordana. Jordana. Jordana, representing which client? Fred Leeds and uh, Botox. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Botox. Okay. And Robert, Yvonne? Yvonne Farrell's here on behalf of the City of Los Angeles Department of Cultural Affairs, Vision okay. Theater. Yvonne Farrell. And of course, Misty uh, from Lemur. Okay. That, that, con that concludes our roll call. And again, please monitor as people uh, chime in. Uh, now, in your in your packets, you, you should have received an email, or you can download from the. Is, it's on the website, right, Carol? Yes. Um, you have the minutes from last meeting. I have a motion to approve the minutes. Those um, uh, we are a, a quorum represents members present. So members are those who are representing property owners or are the actual property owner. Uh, those present, motion to. I have a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I move to approve the minutes from the last meeting. All right, uh, motion. Uh, first by Misty, seconded by? By Caldwell. Ben Caldwell. Okay, all in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Let's move on to the financial report. I'm gonna turn this portion over to Cheryl, our bid manager. Thank you. Um, so the financial report, did everyone receive it or would you like us to um, put it, it on, the on the screen? Okay, that's what I'll do.
So um, all of this, like Robert said, this is on the community build website um, and we included it in your packet. So at this point, we're giving you the full year and Giannis is also here. So Giannis, correct me if I, um, you know, if I'm not explaining, but it's pretty self-explanatory. The bid assessment from the property owners is about 248,648. Um, we only have these three categories, these things we cannot change. We have uh, the percentages as it's been allocated. And you can see here each quarter, first quarter, I'll see if I can make it just a little bit bigger. First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter. So we completed a full year in a pandemic um, that no one has ever been through before. So no, no best practices, we, we had to make it work. And we kept our eye on the plan and not deviating outside the plan and spending our time listening to the property owners um, and just really listening and taking guidance. The basic needs were spent on clean and safety, trash, um, cleanup. Those are the main activities um, and the personnel that it takes to support. So we have about $4,903.67 that, um, you know, is the variance remaining budget for the 12 month period. Um, so that's how we're um, getting the job done. Can you unpack that variance a little more, uh, Cheryl, please? Um, I don't know how, what do you mean? What do you mean unpack just, it? Just so, just so everyone like, understands. Where are we underspent? Where do we, well, it's how we earn the money. So when you right. go from January through December, the revenue comes in based on tax assessments. So it's no grant, you're not guaranteed anything. It's a, it's a formula that works together. And as those tax assessments come in to revitalize um, these very specific assessment activities, then you can draw down funds and spend. So um, between like October, that fourth quarter, October through December, the tax assessments were not coming in. It's COVID. People were not paying their taxes. That's happening across the board. Um, and so the revenue trickles in and you can only spend what's there. Uh, so we were just, we just pay very close attention to that. I think that's, you know, just our management style. We could have spent quote unquote the budget and just the things that were needed, but that's just not how we were trained, how we came to the table. We wanted to stay on budget and the property owners are very engaged. So I would rather err on the side of spending only what was there than to do something extra waiting on future year assessments. So um, that's just, it is what it is. Right, and the reason I want you to highlight that just for the benefit of the group is that, um, so we manage the bid, the bid funds, uh, the spending to what comes in and the, we don't get funded to hold 286,000 up front. It comes in as, 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 as Cheryl said, as property taxes are paid. What we have done in the past as community build is we have uh, attempted to, where, where funds are available, we have helped shore up the gaps. Um, but because there was so much uncertainty this year, uh, I had to make an executive decision that we would stay very close to the bid budget and not weave or do my best not to weave community bill funds to support it. Because if in fact uh, there was a loss where we couldn't get those funds, then we'd have to eat it. So subsequently, oh, hold on one, hold on one second. Yeah, so the money that was collected in 2020, the total dollars amount of the 286,000 or whatever that final number is, was $185,192. So that's what we had to work with for the bid. And in some cases in the last quarter, because I didn't want to lay off the cleaning crew, I didn't want to lay off our ambassador, 
at that time, we continued to fund that until money started arriving in January. But I have to, I myself had to adhere to some strict disciplines because if in fact community bill did cover some things. So for example, you know, the total experience burned down on Monday. So we don't know what the economic impact of that's going to be. Uh, and it burned to the ground, right? So we don't know what the economic impact of what that's going to be uh, in this coming year's uh, bid funding. So again, we, we, we do try to maintain strict disciplines around what comes in and how that gets spent, recognizing that we want to try to keep the folks on the street cleaning. Uh, obviously, we have a trash issue on Lamert Park and in the corridor. But to the extent that the funds are available, that's that's what we're funding. Go ahead, Cheryl. Um, and I would just add, you know, you can see the percentages of the budget. The plan was on the left side, maybe on your right side in the pie chart. But we actually spent closer to 79% on the clean streets because during this pandemic, you know, that was what the property owners wanted, the stakeholders they wanted um, to use these funds, these activities needed to focus on cleaning and that part of the revitalization, you know, um, uh, shoring that up, building that infrastructure, having many ways that they communicate with us. Um, and we all acknowledge it's a high need. And so we had to go through this exercise week to week. How do you choose the neediest of the already high need list? And I have to say, you know, we figured it out. It's not perfect, but, you know, I would hear from the merchants, I'd hear from the property owners, I'd hear from businesses and other stakeholders. And I think because we just listened and then responded to them, the communication flow um, got better and it matches where they want the priorities to go. So now we know now going from this to that, this is our first year back. We have this new management team. Nobody knew how it was going to work. Um, you know, we don't know anything. Um, and it was a pandemic. Um, so many of the people we don't, we never met them in person because we couldn't. I didn't want to take that risk or any of my staff. So we made it work. So I just think it's a great example of where the resiliency really is in, in Greater Lamar Park and Crenshaw Corridor and what we can accomplish, you know, going forward. We have a strong advisory committee, very active. The property owners that were most concerned, they participated and nominated their folks and we're, we're going through the hard part, you know. So I think a fundraising committee is going to emerge um, and everybody's, you know, plugging in low tech and high tech members in the bid. And I think that, you know, we're going to work together to address the gaps that this assessment um, leaves and reveals. Because I don't think the techs are going to do much better for next year because it's still going to be caught up in some of the consequences of the pandemic. So I think everyone's collectively has that awareness. And now we can really focus on, we have a base and how do we begin to add to it? So I, I look forward, we're gonna keep the same spending plan for 2021. I've already submitted that to the city and he's, um, Eugene, he's going, he gave us a new form um, and I have to get that in by May. So I'll share that with all of you in the next meeting before we submit it. Um, but it's going to be the same budget that we had this year. We're not going to change anything. We're going we, we're to go with the experience. And then our job really becomes to raise um, maybe another 50 to 100,000 to do some of the things, replace the planners, get trash cans for every business throughout zone one and two. Those are some priorities and then our ambassadors and things like that. So, and those are very doable in this um, program year. I think we have more than an 80% success uh, window, you know, to make that happen. So I think, you know, by mid summer, we should be talking to you guys about some real concrete things and I feel good about it. So that's the financial report, Giannis. Um, I'm not the accountant. Did you, would you, did you want to add anything or um, are you still here? Yes, I'm here and I think you covered everything. Can you 
Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess that I was, oh, no. yeah. Sorry, I was navigating. <laughs> um, so <laughs> that's it, Mr. Saucedo. If there's, you know, if there's no questions, you can you can go to uh, move on to the next agenda. Okay. Well, let me just pause here, and I'll take about three or four questions about the budget from the public. I'm going to break protocol a little bit, give folks a chance to, if there's any questions that they have about the budget uh, that we had for fiscal 2020, I'll open that up uh, for a couple of minutes. Okay, hearing none, will somebody coming in? Uh, let's see, do we have somebody in the waiting room? No, everyone, oh no, they did. How did you see that? That was a good eye. I just heard them. Oh yeah, that's Jamila from Kaiser. No yeah, she told me she was gonna be a little late anyway. She had emailed me. Okay, so is there any questions regarding the budget before I move to the next uh, agenda item? Uh, let me, and we'll talk more about program, but one of the things that, that uh, we've had to do, as you see, we've had to eat more uh, into the marketing budget for clean, clean activities, public safety as well, or actually public safety ambassador program uh, to keep that moving. And as we, as we do more fundraising, our goal is to uh, begin to take advantage of some of the marketing uh, genius in the community uh, particularly around folks like Terry and Kaya, uh, who have uh, uh, definitely are eager to get engaged. And those of you who have some input, we also want to put some electronic uh, signage in Lamert Park. But again, that all comes back to when we get the appropriate dollars to do so. So hearing that, let me um, go over to uh, property owners, next agenda item number four, property owners and business owners report, community build, business manager update. So um, I don't have a whole lot to report here other than we did lose a very significant property in Lamert Park. Um, and uh, that was the total experience property. Is, is, if you don't know, that's the property just directly next door to Delicious. Uh, they're on the corner of Angeles Vista and Crenshaw, which was burned to the ground, uh, I believe um, late last week or early, I think it was late last week. So, um, uh, we don't know what the economic impact of that's gonna be from a tax perspective to the bid, but we know there will be an impact uh, as well. Um, Cheryl, do you have any updates relative to the businesses? Um, let's see, no, we don't have anything outstanding other than um, Kaiser, who is one of our anchor um, property owners, they have an awesome new business health social program. It's cloud-based. And I'm, I was so glad that Jamila could join us. And she has reached out and is willing, you know, to connect to property owners, business owners. I think it's a great tool. And we'll be promoting that quite a bit, you know, coming up in the next, you know, four quarters. So if you don't mind, I could I could check in with her now or if you want to go to the next partner section well, the agenda. Um, well, since it is a, a, a business owner report, maybe Jamila can speak to it. Jamila, are you there? Do you have a few minutes to talk about your new resources? Hi, good morning, everyone. I am here. I was not planning to speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to talk about it. It's awesome. Well, hey, hey Jamila, why don't, yeah. why don't we do, why don't we do this? Uh, if you work with me, you know I will put you on the spot. But but here, here's what here's what I'll do. I'm going to yeah. ask staff to coordinate with the community response system to host a uh, a Zoom call for everyone that's here and a couple other organizations I think should hear about this. Uh -huh. And then if you would be open to sharing that on that call, then we'll go ahead okay. on to the next item. Is that okay? Yeah, that's, I, I do want to point out that I will need to find someone within my organization because I'm, I'm not directly involved with this one. I'm not even indirectly involved. I'm just sharing a resource. Um, right. But if you give me that information, when it's going to be, I will find someone to okay, we'll, you know, we'll, represent us on it. And we'll coordinate that for either later this month or sometime next okay. month. Okay. Sounds and good. That, that will not be a bid call. That will be a call, a call that involves bid members. 
and yes. post some yes. other organizations. Okay. Yes. Yes. Happy now, to I'll have that. On that. I'll send that to um everyone and I'll forward it to all of you anyway because it, it's a it's a cloud-based tool but it allows you to identify resources share resources and I think that because Kaiser is one of our um bid anchors that it'd be great if we're all doing business um together and I think the only other update I would add is that we um partnered up we're partnering up and still defining our way with a local chamber uh, most of the bid best practices throughout the city includes a partnership between the lead bid organization association and a local chamber of commerce. So um, Armin and the Crenshaw Chamber have agreed to um, work in that role with us and that will help us with our fundraising as well and we can work together because, you know, revitalizing neighborhoods requires all hands on deck. And I think we have a good infrastructure with our advisory board in place, the merchants and um, the business owners, property owners now adding our chamber, you know, we could be a real force. And so Armin, I'm putting you on the spot too, just to thank you for agreeing to think through this with us and being be in this with us and look forward to that owners in this 2021 everybody will be understanding your problems, your issues and advocating in the many different ways um, that how we show up at the table. So excited about the chamber working with us this year. We're more than happy to be uh, working with uh, Community Build and the, uh, the Merritt Park uh, bid. And uh, it's our, our pleasure, you know, we are, we're like everybody else uh, in the greater Crenshaw community, we're looking for uh, the community to rise high above where it is right now. We're looking for economic development and opportunities for local businesses, especially local small businesses uh, to thrive and looking to create a place that when that new um, um, uh, train station uh, opens up uh, underground there across the street from the former uh, total experience, that people will be able to come up and see a thriving uh, Lemur Park. Then they, thank you, thank you, Armin. And then the, only, the last thing I want to report out is I, I had a very extensive call uh, coordinated by Yvonne uh, with sanitation regarding the trash pickup. And what I, I want to continue to encourage each of the owners to do is make sure you come into compliance with the city's ordinance to have a receptacle. It, by law by, and by city law ordinance, every business property owner uh, is supposed to provide a trash container for their tenants. Now, the trash cans that are in front of the businesses are not for the use of the businesses to dump their daily trash in. And this is one of the reasons we have a lot of trash problems is there are several people uh, who are property owners that do not have uh, trash bins and or receptacles on their properties. Um, we are trying to work through some uh, other challenges that um, uh, the business uh, the Sika owns and Haroon because there's a, an access issue for them to have a receptacle. So we're working through that to assist them with that. But what, the reason I'm bringing this up is because they are going to go into a citation mode for those who don't have trash receptacles. And that's an effort, in an effort to, um, to, to curb it, the tide. So Okay, so um, it's important that you all adhere to that, but I would encourage you if you have a landlord who's unwilling to do so, um, then as a business owner, you may want to consider. We're going to have to drop them. If they Thank you. Um, so um, if that's the case, then we will have to. Uh, you know, you may want to take on that responsibility and work it out with your landlord, but every, the trash is everyone's responsibility. The other thing I wanted to encourage folks to understand because of the budget shortfalls, um, meaning when we get paid by the bid, uh, we weren't able to do, we were, the good news is in the very beginning of this, we were able to do a lot of sidewalk power spring and cleaning. Ooh. Okay. Uh, um, we were able to put, do a lot of sidewalk cleaning um, and let me pause here for a minute. 
Robert, I think the rules are that. Yeah, can uh, we buy Samu? I didn't hear you. The room is hacked. Yeah, it is. I, I see it, but I'm I'm not allowing them into the video portion, but they are um, racking up in the um, chat box because I've been deleting them and not allowing them. We had that set up, thank God. So I'm trying to figure out how to delete them off of the chat. So please ignore if you can. I'm, I'm sorry, but I don't know how to control that. But yeah. we are blocking them from... And, um, and Cheryl, let me, let me also say to those who choose to disrupt this meeting and put those uh, unnecessary comments out there, know that we are, we are identifying your IP address. Also know we're identifying your phone number. And to the extent that your comments... Uh, uh, become unlawful, we will make sure that, they, that you are pursued. That said, let me continue on. Um, you have one person's hand up, by the way, Robert, yeah. Linda. Well, let me, let, okay. me finish, let me finish my report out and then I'll, I'll come back to that. So, so the trash, because uh, it's, I totally forgot where I was. <laughs> What's the last thing I said? Um, you were We're encouraging, you were encouraging people to um, approach the property owner if they can't themselves um, to get a trash bin for each business owner. Okay, perfect. So, so that's important to do because the, the trash is rolling. The other thing I was going to say is that we were talking about the power spring. In the beginning, we did a really good job of power spring, um, but because of budget, we had to pull back on the frequency of that. But here's what I want to encourage you all to consider. There's nothing that prevents each and every business and or property owner from getting a water hose and washing out in front of your business every day. You know, I make sure that my, I hey, have a staff Ken, that does it. We can hear you, Cheryl. I have a staff that, uh, uh, that does that for us. But when you wash down every day, it actually eliminates other problems that could be around your building. Um, so I'd encourage you to, to you get, just get a water hose every morning or evening and wash down in front of your business. So with that said, I'm going to ask, there was a question from Linda. Uh, Linda? Hi, Robert. Yeah, thanks. Um, I'm glad to uh, hear of the uh, partnership with uh, Crenshaw Chamber of Commerce. Um, just wanted to say that LA South Chamber of Commerce is here, have been on the ground, boots on the ground with many of the businesses in Lemur Park Village. Um, we've not um, ventured outside of uh, the village in our activities, but we are here as well and would love to be invited to be a part of this partnership as well. So certainly, Linda, we'll, we'll definitely have a conversation offline about that. Uh, and that's one of the reasons we went with Crenshaw Chamber because of the, the, how broadly they go into the, the bid area. But we'll, have a, we'll definitely have that conversation and there'll be some announcements to be made about that relationship later in, in about another quarter. But thank you for mentioning that. And we do uh, honor and respect what you all are doing. And as you know, Community Build is a member of both chambers. And I want to encourage everybody on here to join both chambers if you can. So thank you, Linda. Um, all right, let's go to, over to our next agenda item, which is our ambassador's report. Misty, are you there? Hold on, I'm coming. Okay. Okay, sorry, that was my um, Zoom technician. He said that Zoom had emailed him to tell him that um, someone was hacking in and they were trying to alert us. So yeah, we can't do anything about that. I'm sorry, everyone. We could all get off and try to get back on, but I don't know what to do, so. No, just, we just have to ignore it. I mean, this, this happens yeah. in council meetings all the time. Okay. Okay, can you all hear me okay? Is this thing okay? Yes, who's, who's, uh, yes, uh, Misty. Misty's up. Yes, Misty. Misty's up. Yes. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Misty Wilkes. Um, because of the budget issues that Cheryl and Robert just went over, I'm not sure what tense I should use, was or am or is, um, the marketing and outreach ambassador um, for the bid. Over the last few months, I have had dozens and dozens of meetings. Um, a, a lot of them have been um, with merchants and some owners 
um, through the neighborhood council. We love Lamert. A lot of meetings concerning um, the issues with the mall um, as one of the largest, if not the largest member um, of the bid, there were certainly at least a dozen meetings um, about that. A lot of the issues that came up have already been discussed as far as signage, um, trash, the issues with vending um, in Lamert. There are a few separate issues that um, members on the west side of Crenshaw have. Um, and that's pretty much it, just in meeting with merchants and vendors and um, owners in Lamarck Park Village and along the Crenshaw Corridor. And I would like to say to anyone on the phone, um, I would still like to be a contact person for any issues that you all have going forward. You can reach me at misty at communitybuild.org. There are a few people on the line right now that I have not been able to get in contact with. So certainly feel free to reach out to me um, going forward. I, I hate to say whether I'm in the budget or not, but that's sort of how I feel about it at this point. So whether I'm in the budget or not, feel free to reach out to me about any issue that you have and I'll still try to harass um, Robert and Cheryl to help us get the things done that need to be done. Um, one of the things that I wanted to say, and if Robert wants us to go into a little bit more detail, we can, but in sort of trying to create um, innovative solutions for some of the issues that exist largely in the Lamert Park Corridor, it, um, in dealing with, you know, some of the egos and personalities and uh, who's more important, the, the vendors versus the merchants versus the property owners versus the homeless versus the volunteers, um, being a part of this community the entirety of my life and being very involved over the last 12 years, I think that it has become clear that there needs to be a central team or central organization that has, um, I guess, the heart of Lamarck Park at its heart, the, the best interest of Lamarck um, in the Crenshaw Corridor at its heart that can manage the variety of issues. I think that this is a critical time for us to imagine and envision ourselves and how we see us in our community in five, 10 or 20 years and that we sort of need to state that claim and that we can only do that as a unit. Um, and out of those discussions and those meetings, I was imagining that there needed to be, um, a, like I said, a central person or a central team. Um, at that same time, unbeknownst to me, Terry Scott had sort of reached the exact same um, conclusion and was drafting and articulating a description for a cultural organizer um, position. And he articulated that a lot greater than I ever would have. And he and Kaya and I have sort of expanded that and have presented um, the team to Robert. I don't know if that's something that would possibly come out of the bid or in conjunction with other ways, um, but that is something that has arrived out of, it, it, it is an idea um, that manifested out of my position as marketing outreach ambassador um, for the bill, and it could potentially have a great impact on the community. Well, Misty, so, Robert, you can let us know if that's a conversation for another time, or if you want a little bit more. No, no you know what? Here's here, here's here's what I like to do with that. This this cultural ambassador uh, program, uh, I envision the bid will play a role, and it'll be a small a portion of the budgeting will come from the bid. But there will be I'm, what I'm actively looking into right now is uh, raising some additional funds. I think that cultural ambassador program is bigger than the bid, right? It, it, so it, it, it does require uh, some uh, a commitment from community build uh, separate and apart from, but in conjunction with, um, separate and apart in conjunction with the bid so that we can make sure you have the appropriate uh, funding in place because with a, with a cultural ambassador team, uh, we'll be able to touch everything from business to arts uh, to, and to all the other um, systemic uh, issues surrounding Lamert Park that supersede the bid. And so I'm, I'm, as I indicated to you guys on the call, I'm very encouraged by and excited about that position. Um, and there, there is a role for the bid. I just, you know, as you know, with your, your, your budgeting, 
you have to spread those costs over different budgets. And so we have to figure out what that is. So I'm hoping in the next quarter to actually have the funds and implement that program. But my goal is to have enough funds to fund it for at least two years. Um, that way we don't have any uh, disruption and we can continue that process. And then that team would consist of Terry, uh, Misty and Kaya uh, as community build employees. So uh, just, just you know, more, more to come on that conversation, yeah, but we have, we have to get it out. Yeah, I'm, this is a, and, and Terry's genius was incredible on this, but again, it's, it's gonna cost, um, it, 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 there's gonna be a cost here of about a quarter million to $300,000 over the next two years to cover such a, a team like that. And then, um, and we're continuing the conversation as we uh, look into ways to raise that money. So just, just keep that in mind. Um, with that We're said, gonna add a little bit to that that yes. from to give credit to our property owners. So um, I have to say that Ben and um, James have been really, you know, the drivers of all this because it was the Otis Parsons report that um, James gave me to use that to drive how do we create this cultural you know, um, role these organizers and refashion, redress that work to fit where resources and the data. And it was just great. So I just want to say that if you, we, if you want to see what's the theory of change, the anchor, it's the whole economic description about using the creative economy and how, especially in Southern California, Los Angeles, we have these contractors as a class of workers that grew faster than other classifications in the creative community. And they pulled it together to help show, demonstrate how to drive an economy, how to attract those kind of resources from various sectors. So it was really exciting. So um, I'll share that with the board again. I think we sent it out before, but because Lamert Park Crenshaw Quarter is such a cultural hub, you know, why not use those tools to drive how we think through, you know, and create the roadmap. And then you bring this echo chamber, all the other investors and sectors that are represented um, so it's pretty exciting. I, I just wanted to say good job to Misty, Terry, Kaya. You know, they were all really diligent. Ben and, of course, James, my two idols. I love them both. Good. It was really good work, um, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. So let's move on to our next agenda item, uh, Lamert Park Crenshaw Quarter Community Safety uh, Committee. We're just going to go by each person. We're going to start with Officer Paul Eveleth. Um, if you could introduce yourself and your role in the community and, and your report. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the invitation, uh, Cheryl and Robert. I uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, and anytime you want me to participate with the bid meetings, I'm more than, well, um, more than willing to and definitely interested in doing so. Um, so every, uh, for those of you who do not know me and don't uh, understand the position um, that, I, that I have in the community, um, so I am a police officer and I do work uh, at the Southwest Community Police Station. So every neighborhood, every community in the city of LA has a senior lead officer assigned to it. There's about 200 of us in the city. Locally, there's about 10 of us. And um, I am responsible for uh, addressing issues that tend to fall through the cracks, things that are ongoing, uh, related mostly to quality of life any type of uptick in crime. And the area that I cover uh, ranges, uh, well covers the areas of Lemert Park, Angeles Mesa, parts of Angeles Mesa, and parts of Arlington Park. And uh, those areas, as far as LAPD is concerned, would be from 52nd Street on the south, all the way north to Obama Boulevard. I also cover Exposition Place, the business district, and also uh, from Van Ness Avenue, all the way to Crenshaw. So it's a pretty big area. Within the Limerick Park Village, I think most of you know uh, that we also have, we're very lucky to have uh, three outstanding footbeat officers, Officer Cole, Officer DeLanay, and Officer Crowder. And they work very closely, as you know, with the businesses and the community at large. Um, so uh, my schedule uh, is actually finally set for the first time in my career. Uh, it's it can vary, of course, if something comes up, but so that all of you know, I work Saturday through Tuesday, 
and I will put my cell phone number in the chat as well as my email address for those of you who do not have it. I think most of you have it already. Um, is it okay to share my screen? Yes. And, oh. and um, Paul, what I, what I would rather do is I'm going to have um, um, Cheryl push your phone number out to everyone on this call. Oh, sure. Because, because of the disruption that we had earlier, I'd hate for that to end up on your phone. Oh, you know what? I should know better. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Robert. I appreciate you uh, respecting that. Um, so uh, I'm going to share the screen then. Okay. So what we're looking at here, can everybody <clears throat> see it? Okay. So uh, this screen is available to you on lepdonline.org. And if you ever want to, uh, if you ever have any difficulty navigating where this particular screen is, it's updated every few weeks. But what this shows is overall crime in the Southwest area. It's a very large area, of course. Um, there's 21 uh, patrol divisions. I work for one of them, the Southwest area. So uh, it, this is a busy chart, but I just want to point out a couple of things. So we, we look, LAPD looks at crime data. Uh, we call it part one crime. Obviously that's reported crime. We know that there's a lot of crime that's not reported for a variety of reasons. But for, uh, so the crimes that are measured, uh, whether when you look at data in the newspaper, uh, we look at part one crime, whether crime is up or down or the same. So this does not include things like arson. It does not include DUIs. It doesn't include if somebody's arrested for a narcotics charge and it doesn't include any type of traffic violation, all right? But it includes all the violence. It includes any property crimes for the most part. Um, so if you ever have questions about that, please let me know. But uh, as far as part one crime, uh, crime is up about 5% uh, from, uh, from 2020. Uh, crime is slightly down by actually significantly down almost 35% if you compare year to date from two years ago. However, violent crime is up. Um, we, we have uh, our aggravated assaults, which would be like an ADW, a shooting, uh, domestic violence, if there's uh, physical harm uh, from uh, last year, year to date is up 46%. That's an alarming figure. Uh, just as an example, uh, shots fired, which could be a shooting where nobody's hit. It could be where somebody was injured. It could be a homicide. So far this year in the Southwest area, we've had 21. Last year, the same time period, we had four. So even though overall crime is down, we're up significantly when it comes to these other uh, events. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, I will show you another screen here. I can. So this is the Limerick Park Village. Uh, this is also a uh, database, a mapping system that you all have access to. We officially recognize it. If you go to our website, there's a link to crimemapping.com. I'm sure some of you are already aware of it. Uh, you can play around with the, the dates. You can choose uh, a wider range. So I can look at two miles within the Limerick Park area. I chose a quarter mile just because I know this is the bid meeting. So if you look at some of these crimes, um, just uh, two nights ago on the 27th, we, um, and, and I've been off yesterday and today, so I apologize if I didn't get the word out to, to uh, a couple of you that are online, uh, but I just found out about it this morning. There was a shooting right here uh, on, uh, at three in the morning at Edgehill and Stalker in some type of a parking lot. I'm trying to determine if that was one of the apartment building parking lots, but the suspect was about 26, 5'10", 180. He shot towards somebody. We don't even know who that victim uh, is. Sometimes victims don't report it for, for a, a, you know, a number of reasons, but there was definitely a shooting. There was evidence of a shooting. So if anybody has heard anything, feel free to call me. And we also have Crime Stopper, LA Crime Stoppers, which is a, a way to report it 100% anonymously. Um, on the 10th, there was a robbery at Lemert and Vernon. And that was where uh, it was at 11 p.m. And a 65-plus-year-old uh, individual was walking on the sidewalk. And he was approached by somebody uh, quite a bit younger than him with a curtain rod. And he beat him with the curtain rod and took his money. That was a robbery at 11 o'clock on the 10th. And then uh, we also had one uh, on 43rd place right in here. 
on January 4th, where a Pizza Hut delivery driver was uh, conducting business and somebody approached him and punched him and took his cell phone, the pizza and money. Um, and then uh, the last robbery, uh, I'm sorry, that was right here, excuse me. And um, that's it as far as the violent crime. Um, I'm surprised that we don't see any stolen vehicles in here. We do have one, uh, let's see here. Actually, that's a burglary from vehicles, someone breaking into a car. Um, if you were to look at the residential areas, more of the, where the homes are, we've had a significant number of stolen cars. It's ten, trending downward, but we're still seeing a problem. So if you have a car that's 10 years older or more, I really recommend one of the steering wheel clubs, also known as the club that you could purchase at AutoZone for about $30. It's well worth it. And uh, we very rarely see a car that's stolen where the owner of the car had a club on the steering wheel. And then catalytic converters has also been a problem. Um, so is there time for questions, Robert, or would you rather defer that to later? Um, let's, let's just get through them now. And okay. then we'll, so we'll take a couple of questions. Go ahead and open up the screen, uh, 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 cut the share off. Or if there's anything that, that bi as business owners and property owners, you would like me to work on, or you would like myself and the other officers to work on, it's really good to hear what your concerns are, even if it doesn't show up on these maps. Okay, so we'll move on to the next agenda item, hearing no questions. Thank you, Paul. I appreciate you always uh, uh, making yourself available and, and doing the work that you do. Thanks, Robert. So let's, uh, there you go. Next, next agenda item would be from, you got incidents, COVID-19 updates. So let me give you all a couple of updates. Um, <clears throat> uh, starting next week, uh, we, 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 so Community Build has several uh, uh, community healthcare workers that we hired between October and December, our contract with the county ended in December. We had about uh, three to 600 people in various capacities. We did retain about 17 people to, with that program to continue to do outreach. So in the next week, what we're anticipating or planning for them to do is they're putting together small business packages that will include a thermometer, some PPE equipment, and if we have any tests left, we may even provide you with some uh, some, some, some uh, rapid tests that you can do on your own if we have any left. And there, so they'll be doing, as part of the ambassador program, they'll be working with uh, Misty and her team to, to distribute that. Um, those to the, to the business, I'm trying to do that at least once, minimum once a month for small businesses. Now their role is to do that throughout South LA but they're gonna start that in the Lamert Park uh, Business Improvement District first. And then we'll go into other parts of the city that we do that. Uh, if you do have an immediate need for at least mask, um, I, um, I procured about $68,000 worth of PPEs. Um, and so we are happy to share that with those of you here in the community, um, should you need those. Uh, we'll make go we'll avail we'll avail a supply order for you, both uh, uh, for your business or even individually, and just continue to wear the mask. That's what we're trying to encourage. And the masks that we have are the N95 masks that we can make available to you. Okay, just um, um, shoot uh, Cheryl an email, and then we'll forward, we'll make sure we can coordinate that for you. With regards to uh, also um, the COVID situation. Uh, Community Build held a press conference earlier this week um, in protest of the governor's decision to change the tiering system of who actually gets the vaccinations. And the reason we did that is because, you know, we have 68 frontline regular employees who are out there in the form of interventionists. We've got our healthcare workers out there. And these are frontline folks, bus drivers, et cetera. And if we don't protest this, then these people won't see a vaccine until July, June or July, which is really too late. They're the most at risk at you know, being out there getting the word out about COVID. So we are organizing a letter writing campaign. I'll have Cheryl push this out. Uh, I'm talking to our publicist right after um, I, I conclude this call to, to review the letter she put together. 
We'll be sending each of you that letter. And um, when you receive it, we would ask that you send it to the, the governor uh, via fax. Uh, we'll have information on how to do that. Your local senator and your assembly person, uh, as well as local elected officials. We have to get on the same page about this vaccine. The other thing that we're doing is we are, we are being asked as leaders to encourage folks to get the vaccine. And what I've asked public health and a number of individuals to do is we recognize there are five different vaccines on the street now. You know, you've got the Pfizer, the Madeira, Johnson Johnson's coming out with one, Sanofi has one, and I forget who the other player is. But both of them are, there are two different technologies for the vaccine. One is an RNA-based vaccine. The other one is off of a protein fat at the cellular level and, it, and with the virus inserted into it, um, and which is typical when they do um, uh, vaccinations. What I've been asking the question of before we promote vaccines is let us know what the precautions for each are. So for example, if you're a diabetic, uh, people were showing up not taking their diabetic meds and passing out when they should take their diabetic meds before they get the vaccine. Um, if you have allergies, there's, there is the potential for certain allergies to cause anaphylactic shock. So you should be taking your medication before you go and get the shot. So these are little precautions that I'm asking public health to get to us before we take a full-blown active role in promoting the vaccine as a community. Um, I think it's important. Uh, I have had the vaccine and today I'm going to get my second shot. So um, um, good to see you all. Hopefully it works out. <laughs> but but um, little vaccine humor. But, but just know that that is something that's on the horizon. Uh, and we are anticipating once we are able to vet through the precautionary conversations that we will uh, be encouraging several sites um, throughout the Southwest area for uh, those to uh, receive the vaccine. So look for more to come and we'll be pushing that information out on the websites as well as directly via email for those who are on this call. So that's where we are with the COVID updates. And then uh, on the bid safety and security, as you all recall, um, in, uh, around the summer, uh, we were, it was requested by the merchants that we try to increase uh, our public safety initiatives associated with the bid. So uh, the bid folks, although you know, it was a fine line between security and public safety ambassador. Um, so we did provide um, at great cost, by the way, a number of people, one of whom was from um, the FOI, Queen Amina helped us uh, for one end of the village or actually for the village, FOI provided that service. And then we had uh, another service provider who maintained the uh, Northern end of the block in the village and then the rest of the corridor. Uh, as we, as I indicated to everyone, when we provide public safety, it cannot be just for the village. It has to be for the entire corridor. So on the weekends, we've been providing that. We did have to pull back the funding on that because we ran out of funds to fund it because the bid uh, funds did not come in. And there was a point when community bill was offsetting some of that cost. But again, I have to be careful how we use our funds from other programs with the bid because those other fund, those other programs have to still remain funded. So to the extent that uh, the tax dollars come in, uh, we will resume the security when we have enough, or, or, or I should say public safety ambassador program at, at its full um, range that we had before when the funding is made available. I am however, encouraging all of the merchants to continue to work together and help augment that cost because our role is not to provide security. And even when we do provide public safety, it is more about presence than it is enforcement. We do not have the authority to enforce anything. And while most of the people we have out there have the ability to um, protect themselves and others, um, they are not in a position to uh, cost anyone. They're really there to protect themselves and have a presence for security in the village. When things get out of hand, that's when we reach out to Paul and do some pre-planning around. We've had a couple of incidents. We had some issues. We did have an armed security guard at one time um, where uh, because we had a credible threat that we anticipated in the village for a couple of weeks. And that was during the protest times. And so once that was uh, relieved itself, then we, uh, we removed the armed security guard. So again, we are um, doing our best to help you. But remember, this is a we thing, not a me thing. 
So we have to um, figure out a way for the merchants to come together. And Linda, maybe you can help them think that through where they can provide some additional funding to augment what the bid dollars are doing for them. That's very important to consider for the future. So um, with that said, are there any questions before I go to item number seven? Uh, yes, this is Amina Muhammad. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, greetings to you and everyone on the line. I would like to say uh, since December and all of January thus far, uh, the FOI have been doing security and uh, we have been coming up with ways to assist. And But at this point, we will need some assistance to help. We've been doing fundraisers and uh, getting money to provide security and we it's much needed security. It isn't like it's, you know, we don't need the security. We need them. It's, it's uh, cold, so we don't have as many people out in the murk as we, we will have as soon as it warms up. So I would like to really meet with you as soon as possible about it. Yeah, you know, I mean, I'm going to have to put that on hold. It, it really comes down to the funding. And if there's funds in the bid, then um, uh, we will make it available for the security. But we, we did absorb all of the cost um, when we did this. And, and originally the plan was we would augment the cost. And so you have to understand that with this funding, um, this funding is to be utilized for the benefit of the building owners not just the village. And that, that extends all the way to where Kaiser is. And um, so we have to make sure that there are services for them as well. So again, I, I'm happy to have that conversation with you when the funding's in place. And as you, as you know, Ernest is the person that, or you can talk to Cheryl too. Uh, Ernest and Cheryl are my two liaisons to deal directly with the community. Any other yeah, questions? Yeah, that's one of those things we were talking about, um, I'm a, a Queen Amina, is um, unfortunately the way this assessed, individual parcel assessed project works, it's, it's, it's guided by that. And so even though we know we need it, um, the assessments alone may not take care of that. And then the management plan is what restricts us to stick to the plan within those percentages reasonably to spend for certain expenses. Um, and as you can see for the calendar year, we were already 79% um, you know, with clean streets. And so that's where safety and all that comes in. So the encouragement is the advisory committee and having a regional focus, which means that local area fundraising body that really is focused on that coordination, communication, collaboration around these issues is where the power and the extra resources are gonna come. It's just not enough to take care of what's needed. Doesn't mean that it, it changes the importance or priority, but it's like you gotta have the resources. So that's, that's just something we know now for sure after year one, and that's where we're gonna spend our time in year two, year three, you know, building the ability to raise money. That's, that's what it comes down to. Can we as businesses, property owners, the property owners are already paying the tax assessment. So they've kind of put their commitment where they're there. We want revitalization. We're willing to invest in this tax um, program that the state approves. Now it's up to us as business owners, residents, nonprofits, the creative community, other types of landlords and stakeholders. We got to add something to the pot. And so that's the accountability and the, the, you know, the cross the board. It happens in all other bids across the city. This is no um, new thing, you know, and of course we've got these antagonists um, that are, you know, the guy Adrian and others that just really don't understand the process and make it burdensome. So we will be focused on that fundraising. It's so important and it's not, I, I recommend it to Robert his nonprofit should not be subsidizing the tax assessments. If the money isn't there, just stop. Make a grown up corporate decision, stick to the script, follow the rules and 
they can vet it all they want to. You can't get something out of nothing, you know? So it's, it's the math. The math doesn't lie. One plus one is only two. It can't be subject to interpretation. It can't be politicized. One plus one is only two. So if it's not enough money, it just isn't. So that's our, that's the call to accountability. We need to, you know, redress and put together a fundraising committee and bring those resources into our community. And I think we can do that. Some of the tools I mentioned that Kaiser introduced, those are some of the things we're going to leverage um, to help boot you know, and make it happen. So that's all I got to say about that. Any other questions regarding uh, the uh, public safety and uh, the bid cleanliness? And we're going to go to uh, open comments later, but I just wanted to kind of get through this as we as we rifle through each item. Yeah, I would like to talk about the cleanliness. I um I think we need um the guys that clean more often than three days a week. I think they're on three days. We really need them more than that. I yeah, know man. Tony, Tony, and I have been paying out of pocket for a, a extra security guy to come uh, at least two days out of the week and pick up trash. But it's it's just it's a lot. Yeah, and again, I mean, it just comes down to the budget. I mean, there, we have the guys on the street four days a week. Um, we have a trash pickup service. Uh, unfortunately, because of the street vending, there is nothing in place to make the street vendors adhere to the trash and there's not a community trash can for that, which we're trying to work through right now with the Department of Sanitation. But until we get more monies, I mean, it, and, it, and again, it, it, there's nothing to prevent business owners from going out in front of their business and cleaning up in front of it. You know, I, again, I do that every day. Uh, well, I don't do it, but I, my staff does it every day to make sure that our building looks clean. So we can only do what the money allows us to do. And I recognize that people want more, but, uh, but, you know, the money only pays for so much. And there was a time when Community Build was using its resources to help augment this. And, you know, in the uh, quarter before the bid launched, Community Build actually paid for the trash cleanup that Africatown so graciously did. And, they, and by the way, they did a phenomenal job. I have to give them credit. Uh, during that period, they did a really good job. And, and when some of the individuals that uh, are no longer with the program were with us, they did a, a hell of a job then too. So, um, you know, my hat's off to them. But again, it just comes back to dollars and cents. And we're constantly looking at that. And again, I, I cannot um, dip into other budgets because as I get buckets of money for community build, those are for very specific programs. And you know, I've had the option of being able to do that because of my unrestricted account. But again, my unrestricted account is for our other business uses. So we do do that on a cost reimbursement basis when we can, but I've had to pull back on that and stick very strict to the, the business improvement district budget. And so those are the disciplines that, um, you know, we are gotten back to, you know, so it's kind of like you don't pay your rent money to pay your car note, right? Uh, you don't use your car note to go party with. And that's kind of where we are right now is we have this because of the times that we're in, we have to watch our dollars and cents very, very closely, both for the bid and all the programming the community does, build does throughout the city. Okay, let me go to the next item to our external partners report. Is anybody here from the city clerk's office? Okay, let me go to the next item. Um, I don't think we invited CD10 this particular round because we have not had a sit down meeting because of the transition of office but we expect to have CD10 on our next call once they've settled into office and we've had a chance to sit down and talk to them about the bid. I've had some uh, informal conversations with the councilman, uh, but I did not want to invite them to this particular meeting because they have not had the benefit of going through all of the work that we've done and then talking through what additional resources are available given the COVID situation that we're in, but expect to hear from them in the next quarterly meeting. Um, both chambers are on the call. Let me start with Armin Ross. If he's still, if he's still here, is Armin still on on the call? Okay. How about uh, there? There he is. Okay. Armin, any updates? Uh, no, I I I I don't have any any updates uh, as pertains to uh, to the bid. Um, okay. No, no, I I don't. I don't have a report. Okay, Linda. Um, 
you have, if you want to give an update on the South LA Chamber, because I know you guys have some events coming up, if you could uh, please uh, share that with the group. Yes, thank you. Um, you can visit lasouthchamber.com. We have, we are not your average chamber, as we always say. We have lots of events coming up, like History Month. Um, we did lose one of our very valued members. Um, if any of you knew Cecil McLean, he passed away due to COVID. Um, and we are going to continue his legacy. His birthday is on the 18th of February. So we will be doing a celebration of life for him. Um, and we are here helping businesses not only survive, but to thrive. We have lots of uh, financial op opportunities with many of our partners. So if you are a small business and you're not thriving, then I say hit lasouthchamber.com and check us out. Yeah, and, and there's something I saw um, this morning on Facebook that I can't find now, but there's an event you guys have coming up that's pretty interesting. Do you know what that is? Uh, yes, that is our Black History Month event. This has something to do with business. Gosh, I just saw it. I can drop the uh, flyer in the chat in the chat if it's available, Cheryl. Okay, yeah, that'd be helpful. Yes, I, I thank wanna, you. Because so, you guys are doing good work, as is the Crenshaw, and I want to make sure that everyone has access to that. And then uh, for the businesses that are on here, just remember they reopened the PPP programs. Uh, so there will, I'm sure we'll be hearing more about that in the coming weeks, but you should be uh, looking to uh, participate in that. Is Lamert Park Village on the line? Okay. Business services is a typo. Uh, how about we love Lamert? Okay. And is anybody here to speak on behalf of the Lamert Park? Wait, 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 wait. Kaya was on here earlier. Kaya jumped off. She had okay. to run. Uh, you going to speak on behalf of them, well, Terry? Yeah. Um, I'll put the flyer in the chat. We're launching the first We Love the Merit uh, Village Talk. Called Village Can't Talk. hear you. You have to use your outside voice, Terry. Okay. Um, we're launching our first Village Talk at We Love the Merit right now. It's going to be an online um, space for creative play and, and, and conversation. We're launching in conjunction with Art Walk with Ben Caldwell, and we're going to be doing it the last Saturday of every month in conjunction with Art Walk. This Saturday, we're featuring Ben as the keynote. Um, it's called um, George Washington Carver, Afrofuturism OG from Farming to Fiber Optics, and um, noon to two o'clock this Saturday. Excellent. Will you be recording that and pushing that back out? Yes, we will be recording it. Okay, if you could push that out as well after, I won't be able to make a side, but I'd love to see it. Okay, absolutely. You. Missy, what'd you say? I was telling Terry to tell about the breakout rooms, who was hosting the breakout rooms and the topics. Right, two breakout rooms. Um, Misty, why don't you talk about yours? <laughs> wow, really? Financial empowerment uh, will be hosted by myself and Tyler Grady. And the other one will be Ade and um, Retro talking yeah. about the San Copa City Electric Vehicle Program. I'm here, Retro's here. Oh, okay, man. How's it going? Um, yeah, we'll be just uh, doing a promotional education on onboarding for using the shuttle services and the e-bike share, and then give like a framework for a uh, pass forward towards uh, extension and growth. Hey, Retro, can you real quick share with the group, because I don't think a lot of people know this, about the shuttle that, that, that is available here? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so working with uh, Ride On and All Day, we were able to make a connection to Lacey. That's the LA Clean Tech Incubator. They provided grant funding um, from cap and trade dollars to pay for a free shuttle service. The free shuttle service travels... Um, it's actually transitioned this week. So it starts on Wednesday uh, at, I believe, 10 in the morning till 4 p.m. It helps uh, South LA Cafe deliver some food through their Chewbox platform to needy community members that, uh, that are signed up with that food delivery service. And then um, that's also open to the public on Wednesday. And then it's uh, from 10 in the morning until 6 in the afternoon 
Thursday through Saturday. Um, and we'll be doing that uh, uh, through the end of March. Um, and then we're, we're working uh, uh, potentially with Linda to be able to uh, help with some of the, the, those opportunities. And then LADWP is sponsoring some of the advertisements. So we're still trying to keep it free for as long as we can. And is, are there specific stops or they get picked up at their house? How does it work? Oh, uh, well, there's a, the flyer that I'll, maybe I'll share in the chat. Um, and then maybe I think uh, uh, Cheryl has already been able to distribute that yesterday by email. But the way that it works is you can flag one down. If you see one of these circuit shuttles driving around, they travel mainly along uh, Crenshaw Boulevard between Exposition and Slauson, and then along King Boulevard between Kaiser, uh, Permanente, Baldwin Hills, Crenshaw Plaza, over to Western, and then they go north on um, Western towards Exposition. So they connect to the two metro stops. Um, and what we're hoping to do is, is uh, extend the service further into the community once the metro line opens and we make a partnership, hopefully, with LA Metro. Okay. Retro, when you get a chance, let's, let's, I know we talked the other day, but I just thought about some. Why don't you reconnect with me? I want to put you with my PR person so okay. we can start promoting this in the press. That sounds amazing. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks. Um, thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. The, uh, the Mer Park Merchants Association, is anybody here to represent them this morning? Is that Amina, Jordana? Who else is here? Yeah, Amina. Yes, sir. Okay. Any updates for from the Merchants Association? Yes, sir. Um, the Merchant Association is um, definitely working on um, getting more members in the association. Um, we're having our regular meetings and uh, discussing our plan of action for 2021. Um, so yeah, we got a lot of great things happening, a lot of great things on the way. Um, I'll let you know more as um, we solidify some of the things we're working on. Okay, perfect. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, item number eight, save the date. Uh, if you, I'm not going to go over every date, but if you look at the, your agenda, item number eight lists all of our upcoming meeting dates. They're also on the uh, on the website. From time to time, we do have to change the dates. Uh, there was a lot of reporting that needed to be prepared, and and so we did change the date for this particular meeting. But those should be okay moving forward. If there if there is a change, we'll we'll notify you ahead of time when we have to do so. But make note put those in your calendar. Uh, that is those are the dates we're going to utilize uh, for upcoming. Um, save the date meetings. Okay. At uh, this time, I'm going to go to item number nine. Uh, and this particular uh, item is for bid board members who are the um, owners of properties or representatives. At this time, if you have any questions or comments you'd like to make. So I know I'm, I'm online again, I made, I'll make start the first comment. And you know, I just want to encourage everyone to take the time to get a water hose and hose off in front of your business and wash your windows down, et cetera. That's something that you can do um, to, to you know, continue the cleanliness in the business, business. And what it does do is it does move uh, some of the uh, blighted elements and characters away from your business if you do it frequently enough. And it will change the texture of what happens around your, your business. Uh, anybody else uh, as a build, building owner, Ben Caldwell, Jordana, Yeah, I do that on a constant basis. So it's it's what we've done for as long as we've been here. You just wash in front of your building. Right. Thank you, Ben. And also, yes, we keep the front of this. The storefronts are pretty clean. It isn't the storefronts. You know, it's the alleys and it's uh, on the corners that you see most of the trash. So and across on the park side. So it isn't so much in front and the side, some of the sidewalks, but it isn't in front of the businesses. The businesses are pretty clean. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, Amina. Jordana? Yes, and um, we do power wash, um, you know, especially uh, around the buildings on 43rd uh, place. 
um, and an alleyway and an alley on the side, but we just cannot win the amount of, of trash and, um, and you know, everything else. I mean, I don't need to, to point out um, all the problems that we have with sanitation around those buildings. Um, so we definitely need help with that. We do take, we take power washer, not only a hose, but a power washer and we power wash everything. But on the very next day, it's trashed again. So obviously we need help, you know that. And um, if you can work with me on that, that will be great. Okay. Anybody else? All right. All right. Over that. So I'm gonna open up to public comments now. If there are public comments either in the waiting room, um, and or uh, with this body, I'd ask that you raise your hand at this time. Robert. Yes. Yes, Misty. I just wanted to, I don't know um, if Queen Amina um, and a couple of other people were on when I gave my report. I just wanted to get my email address and my phone number this time if anyone needs to get in yeah. contact with me. But before you do, Misty, I'm, I'm gonna push that out via email to everyone because we have someone who is who is stalking this meeting? Right. Okay. And I don't want Make you to make sure get... you give them the community build phone number for me. Community build phone. She has two phone numbers, Cheryl. So give them the community build phone number. I'll get uh, that from for, for Misty. Yeah, yes. not her personal number. The community build. But we're yes, not going to put. Yes, yes, I will. Don't, don't I put will. it in the just... chat. Don't put no, it in the I'm chat. No, I'm not. I'm not. We have this guy. He's just really going off. He's doing some terrible things. All right, we'll take care of that. So, so let me open it up to any public comments. Um, anyone want to have their hand up for a public comment? Uh, this is Retro. Yeah, hey, Retro, go ahead. I'm um, sorry. I just wanted to add, um, you asked uh, how you can uh, to hail one of these shuttles. There's also an app um, that's available, so you can download the circuit app, and I will... I just put the sheet in uh, the chat and I will give you the direct email link uh, for the information from Circuit. So that was just my add-in. Thanks for the time. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Okay, well, hearing no additional questions. Yes, Terry. Um, <clears throat> just wanted to make sure folks are aware of um, the Lemurk Park portal is um, organized online for vendors to take vendors through the registration process of getting permits and businesses, um, licenses. And they're also a partition out for change.org to take down the fence around um, the Merck Park, Merck Park, the Merck Park, Merck Park Plaza Park. Yeah, well, let's talk about that offline because until there's a protocol and plan to deal with the issues that cause the fence to go up, it's not coming down. Um, anybody? Okay. Well, hearing no other comments, um, Diane, did you have something? Anything from EQUA? Okay. Well, with that said, um, I certainly appreciate everyone's participation in this call. And again, we'll try to, uh, we're going to try, we work hard to make sure you are adequately informed. And just know that this year, one of our goals is to um, raise enough money to try and attempt to match what we are supposed to be getting from, from the uh, tax, tax revenues. Um, it's not something we're required to do, but I do see that we do need to build this up to at least a half million dollars to be a bid that of consequence that can make a real difference. So if you have any ideas, shoot those to Cheryl. We'll be happy to look at those particular things so that we can continue to not only support the business building owners, but also the, the merchants. Until then, and since, and does that be the case? Be safe, take this COVID situation very seriously. You know, I was a little off the grid because I lost two uh, family members in the last month, but just uh, you know, do what you have to do to be safe. Until we meet again, thank you very much. And God bless you all. Thank you. I'll get the notes out to everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Let me save the chat.